Hello and welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today with a really cute little basket block that I found and I thought, well, we would have some fun playing with this. Now this block does lend itself to be cut two at a time, it, but I've given you the cutting instructions in the show notes below. But before we get there, I want to talk to you about L the little quilter now i looked i don't know how many videos trying to find her first name i have no idea what it is and if some of you have gone and checked her out and know what her first name is please put it in the show notes below um she's got a wonderful voice in quilting and it's something you should probably go check out so her youtube link is going to be in the show notes below as well as our facebook group which is growing rapidly we're having a lot of fun asking questions sharing pictures using the uh, virtual sewing rooms sharing patterns it's it's so much fun we're in we're swapping fabrics and it, it's just a blast and then we are also going to find the zoom sew dates from now until the end of December. Hopefully my husband and I will sit down and we'll, we'll lay them all out for you so you can mark them on your calendar. Now those Zoom so dates are for everybody that watches YouTube videos where the virtual sewing room in Facebook is only for the Facebook group members, right? So that's, it's a little different. It's, you know, but if you wanted to come, we've still got a virtual sewing room. So I also do speaking engagements and I do them for free. I do not travel to the gills. I do uh, speaking engagements over Zoom because I no longer have a trunk show because I've given away my quilts to friends, families and charities. So I don't have to, you know, pack a bunch of quilts around. And I wasn't really expecting to do this on YouTube. So I will speak for free. The community service people love me because I ask people to, you know, make charity quilts and use my patterns and it's all good. <laughs> we have a lot of fun at those meetings and I get to stay for show and tell. I'm always excited about that. Uh, we are also uh, offering, everything here is a free pattern on here and the gills, if you're wondering if you can use any of my patterns for your charity quilts, yes, you can you have my permission. Share, like, and subscribe. And now let's get to the sewing. Okay, we're at the sewing machine. Now I lined up all my triangles so they're easier to sew. And I do have, because the, the block lends itself to cut two at a time, two blocks at a time. So I've got the, the, the triangles from the other block for leaders and enders, right? So then I can move through. So I'm just going to put this through my sewing machine run it through it's not this is not a hard block but the hardest part here is doing your half square triangles now some of you have said that you have a really hard time doing your half square triangles now some people believe that starch is the answer and yes it does make it a little easier because both sides of this are bias that you're sewing now and it can create a little bit of problem. Now I have a stitch plate that has just a tiny little hole in it. So my triangles aren't being sucked down into the works because that's another complaint people have about half square triangles. And you just basically, you take your time. You don't pull, you don't stretch those, that bias edge out of shape. And, you know, like you just do the best you can. I mean, at some point, when you do hundreds of triangles, at some point you become an expert, you know, so keep that in mind. I find too, um, the, I didn't use the easy angle ruler for this because I had, you know, squares to work with. And I found, I find that that's easy because then you just make, make the strips into strips, right? And you, you know, cut them and that gives you a blunt end at one end. And that's the end that it's easier for you to run it through, you know, but just like I say, take your time. Don't pull, don't panic, <laughs> no panic. You're supposed to have fun and it does eventually, you eventually get it. Okay. I have done everything to this machine, oiled it and everything. I might have to take this one in for uh, a full servicing by uh, take it into the spa because it's been sitting here for a while, not being used. And I'm just going to run a, another quick triangle through just to 
get this. You know, like I say, they're better at two at a time as a leader ender. This one is a leader ender, okay? Um, and you take the same care with your leader enders as you do with your, your the real triangles. Okay, now, I trim, like I would, you know, take them to the iron and press to the dark, but I trim off at an angle, a little bit steeper than a 45, right, just to get that nice and, you know, remove as much bulk as we can out of that seam. But you press to the dark. Yeah, let's see. Here we go. <laughs> and yeah, if you do a quilt like this, these all these baskets, I mean, they're it's adorable. It is just adorable. Now, what some people do is when they take them and they press them. I'm just going to be finger pressing mine right now because that's easier than watch you guys know how to press right so i just finger press mine into place just like that okay and i already forgot how i laid them out <laughs> oh no oh well now we have time to maneuver them and change them around and <clears throat> not have too much pink in one area it'll be fine Okay. <laughs> That's some beautiful fabrics already. And did you notice I got a design board too now? That is just my, I am so fortunate. I've got this one as a color and this as a color. These two as colors. And this and this. There we go. That works, right? Yeah, it does. I got a design born for my friend Jamie for Christmas, which I thought oh, was so sweet. So now you can trim these down if you'd like. I'm just going to sew them row by row, right? Now that they're all pressed to the dark. And and you can trim them down to, you know, the exact measurement, but... I, I always find that like I, this is a 12 and a half inch block, right? So I always find that these are perfect. Okay. Oh, <laughs> and this is another leader ender going through because I'm going to get the one. I'm going to do this all in rows, so you'll see what I'm, what I'm doing here. Okay. So this goes back, and this goes out like so. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so when you're doing the traditional method, I find you don't need a lot of uh, you don't need a lot of trimming. You can oversize them, but I mean, and you can overcut them too. Like you cut them bigger and trim them down. At the end of the day, it's where um, oops, there we go. At the end of the day, it comes down to what you're going to do, right? Like our, you know, how precise you want to do. I think quilting sometimes is a lot more forgiving than people think it is, right? Now, I'm going to show you something else here too later on about what our grandmothers and great-grandmothers used to do because when I was cutting I found the perfect neutral to go with this and just everything and then it wasn't big enough so I was like you know you always cut your biggest pieces first well I didn't do that so I ended up going oh dear okay Yeah, this baby's got to go to the spa. Okay, so put it back. And then you're going to pick up this triangle. And you're going to lay that triangle right square. Right? Right square with that block. And you don't worry about the little tab hanging out at the bottom. Oh. 
there. <laughs> and you run another leader ender. And yes, there are two extra whites on my leader ender pile, which is okay. And that goes back just like that. Yeah. So once we get all this sewn, once we get this sewn, that's all of the hard bits are done. Well, 99.9% .9 of the hard bits are done. I always found the, 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 this part of the basket the hardest. Because the other parts of the basket just fly together. Okay. Now. Yeah. The next part you would grab would be this. And what you're going to decide now is, okay, do I want them to nest? Yes, that's probably a good idea. So I'm gonna put one going one way and the other one going the other way. And you want them still to press to the dark. And just like that. I changed my needle before we started filming here. I'm just, yeah, I think it's dried out. Oh, oh my, you guys might see me sewing my baby lock yet. <laughs> oh no. Okay. And the last leader ender is such pretty, pretty fabric. There. And see now all my triangles are sewn for the next the next bit, right? Okay. And cut. There. Now this goes like this here. And let's see. <laughs> so you just press them now the opposite direction because you don't want a twisted seam in here. And you want them to nest nicely so everything matches up. And just like that. Okay. Yeah, and I clip that. So all the leader enders are done for the next block, right? So that worked out really well. Now we're going to do these, these ones here. First, we're going to do this. This one first. Okay. We'll line it up nice and straight. Now the other one should go the other way, right? But you want to line up that corner, right? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> They're mirror images of each other, right? Okay, now. Okay, so what we want to do, and I'll take all of this off. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. There we go. And. Okay. So again, press to the dark. And that goes on that side. And this goes on this side, the other side. So you need mirror images to make that basket end, right? Like that. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to sew this piece on, right? Because we're past the hard parts now. We're past all of the hard parts. It's all fine. Okay. Now, yeah. we're going to take our time. We're going to line this up so we have this. Now, if I were to turn this little dog ear under, it would perfectly match up with the top. Right? And that's what we're going to do. Just quick. And we're going to fold this other one under. And we're not pulling because both of these are all bias edges, right? And we're just going to hop right over that little intersection. And we're just going to go right to the end. 
Or I match up my other dog here. Okay. And now... <laughs> and now... We're just... You can remove this... Clip this little dog ear out now. Oh, there we go. Get it out over there. And now we're going to press to the dark again. Now I know this looks kind of funny because it's not... Nothing is laying right, <laughs> but it, it will work. It will work. Trust me, guys. Trust me, guys. Yeah. So, and you just, and like I say, you just finger press all of this stuff the right, the direction it needs to go for now. And when you give it a good press, it'll lie nice and flat. So now the next part here is these side pieces. Okay. So you want to work on the sides and the bottom of the basket. So basically what you're doing is you're lining this up just like so okay there we go oops get that out of the way just a bit it's got to go that little bit's got to go up okay There's one side. There. We should do a whole series on baskets. Because baskets are just quite a lot of fun to work with. And now we're just going to press this way out. And we're going to get back. And now you see we're going to do the other side. Now. We've only got, then we've only got one big triangle. And I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to show you what our grandmothers and mothers used to do. You have the perfect neutral, right? You have the perfect neutral and you don't have enough of it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now when I did what my grandmother would call poverty piecing. So here's the back, the back, the last piece now is going to go on the base of the basket, right? So, wow, I really need to iron this. Okay, so the base of the basket. Now, I did not have enough fabric, so I had to put a seam in there. And I'm sure you can see the seam. Right, so I'm going to put the seam down here because our grandmothers, there was no shame in piecing stuff together to make it work. In a larger quilt, you would never see it. Like, especially that it's, you know, it's a solid white on white or like a solid cream, like off white. So we just use our little dog ears to line up that first bit. And there we go, line up the other side. And just so. Okay. There. Now, I'm just going to get this off. Now, uh, this is a lovely gift. For, from my friend. Um, so, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push it forward like that. Now I'm going to give this a really good press, but you can see where that back seam is, right? Now, if you wanted it a little thinner, like you didn't want that great big seam there, or your, you know, your, your uh, low volume's a little on the thin side, you can trim away you know, another bit of that seam, but I'm going to leave that. Now you can also trim away all your little dog ears that we didn't bother trimming off, right? So, and when you're pressing, you want to press it so it lies flattest, right? So th this, you know, is twist, the, both these seams now are twisted and you just clip them right at the edge, you know, so, you know, that they'll lie flatter and you're not, you're not really messing up that integrity of that seam either by doing that. But you just finger press it first, then take it to your ironing board, give it a good press. Uh, you might want to um, 
you know, use your clapper on it because some of these, you know, some of these things get a little out of whack, but there we go. Let's get to our ta-da moment. Okay, so this is our, our basket block and it looks really great. I um, really love my little design board that's behind it. But like I say, with this, you could sash them uh, around so you don't have to worry about matching your points. Like when you're sashing them, you just, you know, you put like a little inch and a half strip of, you know, low volume and you can make this as scrappy as you want, right? As far as your backgrounds or your, or your uh, triangles, colors. Um, one of the things you see baskets always, you know, put on point. That, you know, is just such a beautiful setting. I mean, you can also lay them, you know, like to one side or the other in a quilt and they look great too. But these are very traditional, but, you know, you use some modern fabrics and some, you know, larger scale and they look like they're a lot of fun. So anyways, I do hope you give this one a try and you have a fabulous week ahead. I, um, we're, like I say, we're excited with the, you know, 2024, we are filming this on January 1st. So we're wondering, we're hoping that 2024 brings everyone that we, that's watching and on our channel, all the members, some lovely and carefree months ahead. Okay. You take care until we see each other again. Okay. Bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for watching our videos and being part of our Facebook group and coming to our Zoom meetings. It's been so much fun on this little adventure that we've been on on YouTube. Um, I just want to quick, we are doing Zoom uh, so dates still coming up on the, and those dates are going to be listed in the show notes of this video for the next year. We're making that commitment to you and we're having a lot of fun with those Zoom so dates. So please, you know, feel free to come in. Even if you're not a quilter and you just want to come and do some crocheting or, or knitting or whatever, yeah, come on down. We're good. Um, the other thing is I still am doing uh, speaking engagements for the quilt gills just to help them out to get back on their feet. I am doing only um, Zoom uh, meetings and I have a PowerPoint presentation that talks about all the free patterns that we have put out and will be putting out to the world. So they're more than welcome to take any of my patterns and use them for their charity quilts, right? So that's kind of important that they, they know that we're there. So if you are part of a guild, let your, uh, your programs person know that we're speaking for free over Zoom only. We're not doing any traveling or anything like that. Um, the other thing that I want to let you know is that we do in our Facebook group, everybody's sharing pictures and having fun and asking questions and it's, it's a, a hoot. And we do still have the room feature in Facebook that we can go sew within. I, my admin person, Kathy, was able to set that up. It's no longer called Brenda's room, it's called Kathy's room, but we got a room. We do have a room working, so we're all happy with that. So if you get the opportunity to come join us on Facebook, that's great. We, we'd love to have you. So until we meet again, I hope you have an absolute, you and your family have an absolutely amazing weeks ahead. Okay. You take care. All right. Bye.